Grant and welcome to Second Plate. So in a different vein than I normally do on the show, I wanted to make a pretty fancy dish. So I'm gonna be making a beef wellington. And a little bit of background on this for me is, two weeks ago I really didn't even know what this was, but I was uh, researching stuff for the beef stroganoff show and I just saw a thumbnail of beef wellington up on the top right where it was the cross section cut into the steak with the puff pastry. And I just had a moment where it's like, I wanna make that. Like I'm just gonna figure out how to make that. So in that vein, this is something where I have changed a couple different things to make it possible for me to cook because generally beef wellington is a big thing you would cook for say like Easter or Christmas for several people. And I wanted to get it down to something I could do within the show as well as something where you could make it for a singular person or like this one depending on the size of your steak. I could easily see that if you have good sides you just cut down the middle and it makes like a really good like date night dinner. So in that vein I'm going to get started and it may not be the perfect beef wellington, but it's going to uh, hopefully come out pretty nice. I've liked it all really well so far, and it really only made me want to have a real one even more. So to start off with our ingredients, the biggest thing I want to get started before anything else is these mushrooms. So the fancy name of this thing I'm going to be making, it's a mushroom paste, is I believe it's called a duxelle. And it was, first of all, one of the things that, just adding my mushrooms, these are shallots, something that I wasn't too impressed with, when I saw it as a concept, but as I actually tried it, this is some time, I was honestly blown away because I've really liked mushrooms more and more the more I've cooked with them. And uh, this, it's surprising how much it changes it. So I'm just gonna take this food processor, go ahead and get these down to a fine paste, and then I'm gonna cook them for like about 10 minutes so we can get all the water out. Because if you're not familiar with beef wellington, it is entirely sealed inside a puff pastry. And mushrooms, if you've ever cooked with them before, they have a lot of water in them. So like if you saute them, it's a big deal that you have to look that they have released their water. So that's basically what we're gonna do here because kind of similar to when I did this, say, uh, the calzone episode, you have this issue where it's not technically a problem, but if you have too much water in the Wellington, it's going to make it impossible to keep it sealed because it will pop. So just a note, and that's kind of the idea behind this. Also, what the Duxel does in particular is it acts as a kind of like a base for the Wellington where it's going to be entirely sealed and it's going to have a steak and a bunch of ham on top of it. And they're going to for lack of a better word, leak all their juices, and they're just gonna go straight into the mushrooms and soak them up because they have nowhere else to go. And it's something where part of me, after doing this, like I thought, oh, this whole mushroom paste, this is just because like every recipe I looked at, surely they just wanna be fancy and they wanna use the term duxel. Like that was a big thing in all, whenever I was doing my research is this concept of a duxel. Surely it can't be like that amazing. But in actuality, uh, I was one over. I totally get why they wanted to do that. Just add a little bit more. Kind of saute this around. I call this out because again, this is going to take like 10 minutes and it's one thing you want to get going while everything else is being prepped. You can just simmer on in the background because I don't need to necessarily saute it. So I just need to get it kind of coated in oil and then this is going to sit on the side until it gives up all its water. Because again, I want this to eventually be a paste. I also purposely saved some of my time for later on for another part of the dish. But uh, it's just something I wanted to call out to leave some of these ingredients in case you want to make a sauce. All right. So while that's going, I'm going to head on over to the puff pastry. I, again, was not familiar with puff pastry as a concept before this show. I'm just gonna roll this out to make a nice square because this is actually just store-bought frozen. It comes in nice like little thirds because they expect you to make like apple turnovers or something similar to that, which is a great idea for an, the next show and that's what I'm thinking of. But uh, we want a square, so I purposely just kind of fold it and get a nice little square shape and cut off any extra. So puff pastry, its thing is it's very flaky and it has multiple layers. I actually thought of doing this for the show, making it, because it's pretty simple. Essentially all you do is you make your normal bread flour, then you also make flour, like dough with flour, 
and butter instead of water. And that's what pretty much all puff pastry is, is flour and water and a lot of butter. And what you do is you would get like a nice little sheet like this, you put your butter on top of it, and then you fold it and you roll it. You fold it and you roll it. And that's how you develop all these really fine, thin layers. So it gets you uh, that puffy pastry that it's known for. So this is ham. Uh, I forget the actual name, I believe it's prosciutto ham. You can use regular ham, you could use deli ham, but I wanted to kind of like spring for something a little bit fancier. But the point is it's nice and thin because this is going to be the second layer of the wrap for the Wellington. Let's go ahead and get this off. I want to try and keep it mostly in one piece or so so I can wrap my thing. Just making a point to go around the outside. How much you need to use here is going to be entirely dependent on your cut of meat. I just have a tenderloin filet. Because like traditionally, if you go and were to look this up, you would make it with the, uh, this really fancy cut of steak beef. And that's nice, but uh, and just in learning the recipe, I can't constantly be making this giant log of meat. Like I would love to, like this actually is something where I would love to make this, like the full recipe, but uh, for the sake of uh, my own wallet, I can't go nuts all the time. Like I'm, I would love to, for example, become very good at steaks, like really know how to cook a really, really nice high quality steak. But I also can't be buying steak every night for dinner. Okay, we got our prosciutto all laid out there while our mushrooms are coming down. They look kind of dry because they still probably haven't given up too much of their water. It's okay if they char a little bit. Probably just use a little bit more oil than I need. actually going pretty fast. I know when I made this at home, this is one of the things where I was always waiting on the mushrooms to kind of come out because it takes a while and it just like happens all at once. Like they'll just be sitting there like nothing, nothing, nothing. And then you look over and all of a sudden there's a ton of water in the pan that you then have to finally cook off after that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the steak itself while we prep that and wait for that to kind of cook a little bit more. So here's what I have. I'm going to be seasoning it with some salt and pepper, as you normally do with steak. I'm just going to try and get a whole bunch, and I purposely just do it on, like, say, a plate and let a bunch of spices kind of just fall to the edge. That way I can kind of just wrap this, coat it. What we will be doing is we will be searing this enough to give it a brown exterior, but the majority of the cooking in this dish is actually going to be done in the oven itself. So I'm no master of that seasoning steak, but generally I've been trying to do honestly more and more like it. Originally, I was really afraid of having too much salt, but I have a theory, and I haven't tested this too much, but I have a theory that if you were just doing like a, a pan seared steak or like a grill, there's only so much salt or pepper that could take, so I don't think you could actually over salt it. Like, I'm sure if you tried, it's totally possible, but I think for just like a normal person who's just kind of casually doing it, I don't know if you really need to worry about it that much. So. I do want to take some care with this though, because if I were to oversalt it, it's not going to fall off on the grill. It's going to be stay inside my uh, beef Wellington. Cool. Okay, let's go ahead, and I'm going to actually put this straight on. Here. I'm thinking the mushrooms I had, either I didn't necessarily chop them too much enough, or uh, they just didn't have as much water as ex like expected. But it looks like it's coming out okay. Normally, you'd want this to be a very nice, thin paste, like a literal paste. But again, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to get this stuck in this ham wrap with the steak 
And what it's going to do is it's going to absorb all that. Okay. Let me get this up to a pretty high temperature because the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to again sear this and I'm going to purposely not clean, clean out the uh, pan because we're going to use it to make a sauce while it's cooking in there. So this isn't going to be too much. If the uh, pan is already at a good temperature, then it'll only take a couple seconds on each side. But it's up to you. Really, it's like you can't go too long. I mean, you're still cooking it. You're not going to burn the steak unless you have just the absolute max on whatever you're searing it on. But uh, I like to just get it nice and good. Perfect. So the idea about using the same pan is to use the drippings from this steak to actually make the sauce. And the sauce is something where I tried a couple different ones. I tried a red wine sauce. I tried, honestly, I tried a cheese sauce just because I was curious to see what it would look like. But the one I kind of settled on is actually a brandy sauce. And so later on in the show, what we're going to do while it's cooking is we're going to save all this and make the sauce in there so you get the taste. And you can then serve that alongside the Wellington. And kind of like the mushrooms where it absorbed it all, that's actually one of the better parts of it, not just the steak. Good, yeah. It's looking to like get a good brown there. Again, it's not really anything too bad. It's not like I need to get a very hard steak sear. Because this doesn't fill the same role as when you were to a, like, sear a steak after it's done. Like a lot of time when I make steak for myself, I do a sous vide, which is where you cook it in a bag in water so you get like, this, this right temperature. And a big part about that is you have to sear it to give it a hard outer layer so it holds in uh, juices and stuff. But uh, it's not that bad. Ideally, I am going to be uh, cooking this to be medium rare, about medium. It's a little hard to judge because obviously I can't see the steak itself. And uh, I don't want to temp it too much. But it's looking pretty good. I love how this is just like falling apart like that already. Like that, I think that's a really good sign about this one. And one thing I like about making these uh, dishes that are really interesting like this is I like talking just to like uh, whoever the butcher is about what I'm making. And this is something where it's like, okay, I'm going to make beef wellington. I know most people don't come in here and say that. And you can tell that like, they get excited. It's interesting more so than what they normally do. So I'm going to wrap this as best I can. And then we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven after giving it a egg wash. Now, this is something where you could actually do this fairly far in advance. I don't think you want to do it a whole day in advance. I will say that. But uh, what's very common is since you need this to hold its form, often you do want to wrap it in just some simple clear film so it can be hold together. You'll say, get all together, get a nice ball. You'll then wrap the ball, and then you would chill it for about 30 minutes. That's the ideal kind of time where it will stay together on its own. For this one, I'm just going to get it fairly quickly in, but uh, I do recommend that because that also helps the steak kind of <laughs> chill out, and it's just a little bit more consistent. But I'm going to get that nice and firm there. At this point, just look. I'm going to eyeball this. There's no perfect way, and cut off any of the excess puff pastry. It's okay if you get a little ham in there. Again, the ham's not the feature of this. But I'm just trying not to have a ton of dough. And this would be, honestly, I think what the best part of, for uh, best use for this would be is go make some like apple turnovers or something for dessert. Like I'm not super familiar on puff pastry yet, but I think it, that'd be the perfect thing because you always end up with like just a little bit more than you need. So I'm just going to form it. It's actually sticking very well, whereas in the past I've had it like kind of fall apart, in which case, there doesn't need to be a right side up for this, per se. You ideally want the, the uh, mushroom dixelle on the bottom. But I have done it where uh, if you want to, you can uh, just coat it entirely in the wrap. It's a little bit harder, but uh, that means you can cook it on pretty much any side. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a couple cuts on the top here. Pull out my egg wash and we're going to wipe it down. 
So my egg wash, this is milk, eggs. You can also use water, egg whites, just egg yolk. That's a whole topic that you can discuss, but it's really up to you and what you happen to have on hand. This is what's gonna determine the color of the beef wellington. So if you went, want like a really dark bun, I guess, I'm not sure if it's a bun, I don't think that's the quite, quite the correct term for it, but uh, go for like heavier like cream and stuff like that. We're just gonna brush this down. This also is going to make it hold together. So the main thing I'm going to look for is try to get these seams and also get where you cut. I personally don't do the bottom of the Wellington. It doesn't hurt, but in my eyes, it's not going to toast as, <clears throat> toast as much just by virtue of it's not open to the air. Okay, gonna go ahead and just get this on the pan. I've been cooking mine at about 350, so we're just gonna get that in and get going. Right in there. Get this in the oven. Again, what's nice is you can make this, I'd say probably about six to eight hours ahead of time, in which case you can just then pull it straight out of the, the fridge, toss it in, and it's pretty nice. While the Wellington's cooking, what I usually do is I'm going to make a sauce, and following the theme of the Wellington based off everything else, it's going to start with a giant hunk of butter. So that's gonna go right in there. Again, this is supposed to be in the same pan as you cooked everything else, the steak rather. And I've actually seen some recipes even call for like just get a, like call ahead to your butcher so you can get like a partial cut of the same uh, steak and you can use that. So I'm gonna toss in some stuff. This is just some thyme and garlic and since we have leftover shallots, I'm gonna toss those in. And then this is just a personal preference. I've been trying it. This is horseradish mustard. I know some uh, recipes will actually wrap, or should say, brush the steak with that. But uh, I think that's a little bit more than I can handle. Just because like, if you have the time to really brush it down and do all that, that's fine. And I would honestly really encourage it. But I find it way easier to get the, uh, put it in the sauce, you still get some of the flavor, but you don't have to constantly manage this big thing as it turns, okay? Gonna get this all around and saute these. And this, I believe, is officially called a brandy sauce. Because once this is going, I have just a small thing of brandy. This is just a simple little bottle. I'm gonna toss that in and let this boil off. What's interesting about sauces is I've definitely, it's something I've been learning a lot more about recently. But uh, I've learned to never really judge it until it's completely done because it can change colors and just do a lot of interesting things. So I'm just gonna put some cornstarch in here. I learned my lesson from a previous show and I'm going to whisk this with my beef broth ahead of time just to make sure it absolutely is done. Because I don't wanna have any clots basically of this cornstarch. And I haven't seen any recipes specifically call for the cornstarch, but just from uh, previous shows where I used it to thicken the sauce, I was like, oh, actually I like the sauce, but I want it to be more, like almost something like a gravy. Not exactly, like I don't want it to be gravy, but I want like a thick sauce that can sit on top of the Wellington, not say one that just runs down or coats the bottom of your plate. Okay, just gonna whip that around while I watch that. And I don't need all of it in here, but I'm just gonna whip it with like a good portion and add that in. Continue to add just a little bit more, I think. I think that's plenty. And I'm going to have this simmer until it's about half the size. I like measurements like that where it's like, oh, go until it's like half the size, because no matter how much you have to improvise, that's always relevant. I think now would be a good time to add any other spices like salt, pepper that you might want in there. I've only made this particular sauce. Uh, this is my second time actually, but because uh, I've tried so many, but I feel like there's more you could always put in there or try. And the idea is, with me at least, I'm trying to essentially kind of replicate the sauces that are gonna be in the Wellington itself. 
And then this sauce is, based on how I used it, less about putting it on the Wellington, but more uh, putting it on your sides. So like I served this with uh, potatoes last time, and I found like, oh, it's nice that you have this for the Wellington, but it's nice, or even nicer, that you can then put this on your side dish, and you can combine the flavors, because that's something I've always liked. I like dishes that kind of kind of all come together. Cool. This is coming pretty good. So we're actually going to go and do this. This probably doesn't need to simmer too much because it's a pretty nice hot plate. I just have some milk. If you want to, you can use cream. I believe actually most recipes call for that. And what's interesting about this is I've been noticing a lot more with these recipes I make about how I actually do care about things like color. And I'm almost thinking like sometimes I could see myself if I think the sauce just looks a little bit too dark, if that makes sense, not for any flavor reason, but I just want to change the color to make it more appetizing, I could see myself doing that. Or if you wanted to like darken it, instead go for probably maybe more butter or something. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out and strain it through a mesh, and then we're gonna go check on our Wellington. So I just have a little small one that fits, fits pretty nicely over this. And I'm going to do my best to not spill this. Interesting. How's this going? There we go. I thought for a second, I, this hadn't occurred to me, is like I said, the uh, thickening part of it, it uh, is a fairly new addition, I'd say, for me. And I, I didn't occur to me that, like, oh, it's actually thicker, so it has a harder time going through the mesh. But basically, I'm uh, getting all of the bits out depending on what you want to put in it. You could probably serve it as is, but uh, I want a nice clear sauce. Once it's been going for a little while, we can go ahead and temp it. This one's kind of interesting because I want to get the steak to be ideally rare or medium rare, but also you're cooking the puff pastry and you gotta kind of just find a good temperature to mix the two and hope it kind of comes out ideal. Something that takes a little bit of practice, but I definitely need to keep working on. But here we have our beef wellington. And we're gonna go ahead and cut into it, and we should see our results. There we go. All right. And it looks like it came out pretty well, because uh, what I was going for was a nice red in the center, because I usually like rare, medium rare, and uh, it's not too bad. I'm really looking forward to this like duck cell, because like I've had other times where it would like kind of get squeezed out because you don't cook all the water out of the mushrooms, but this looks like it's actually held together really nice. And then you can also see how the puff pastry develops these like different little layers, so that you can kind of crunch into it. So then we have our beef. Wellington. And this is something where, like this is, I feel like would be perfect to serve just as is. I'd probably serve it with vegetables. And in general, like if I had this same cut of uh, meat, I think this would be perfect where you're serving it for two people, like you're cooking it for you and you're like SO, and you just split it right down the, right down the middle, you each get half, and it's just like a really nice date night thing, especially because you could make this in advance, and then really it's just throwing it straight in, and then you don't even have to worry about the sauce, but uh, Overall, it's a nice dish. I've, I actually think I'm gonna make this again, and I really think that this year I might wanna go and make the full, like really large, awesome one, just because it's a, it's a cool dish. Like instantly you see it and you're like, that's neat. Like it's a, clearly a thing. It's unwrapped, it's got layers. It's just like, I mean, that's exactly what I saw. I saw, what is that? I wanna make it, it looks delicious.